quite recently, a lady asked me what I do. I said, I sew and create sewing patterns. And she said, oh, that looks like you sewed it, didn't you? How nice. The audacity. In all honesty, it was one of my earliest samples of the Lark Frock, which did have quite a few errors upon close inspection, but it's still Aww. her. Hello, I'm Lydia, and I've been sewing for 15 plus years, and I actually have a Bachelor of Arts in Fashion Design. Hi, tea, hi, tea. And after a couple of years in the fashion industry, I decided to branch off on my own, start a sewing dedicated YouTube channel, and sewing patterns with YouTube tutorials so that you can follow along. And today, I'm here to uncover the mystery behind why your clothes just seem like they're home sewn rather than professionally home produced. You know what I'm saying? We want to hear, where did you get that girl? To which you will answer, thanks, I made it. I have seven juicy tips for you. Let's get started. My number one tip is fabric choice. Even if you are an advanced sewer and you choose crappy fabric, you'll have crappy results, okay? The number one fabric content culprit is usually polyester. Now there is a range of polyester fabrics, not all perform badly, but it's easier to find bad polyester fabric than a naturally derived fabric like cotton, linen, wool, elyacel. It's usually the polyester fabric that's trying to imitate a natural fabric that's gonna trip you up. For example, this yellow fabric that I used for my original Dream Frog sample was an imitation linen in polyester. For the most part, it worked fine, but if you look closely, there's some puckering at the seams. It just doesn't sew up as nicely as, say, a cotton or a linen. Secondly, it may not be the content that's the culprit, but rather the weight or the construction of the fabric. For example, this confetti frock is a fitted garment, and I used a very stiff quilting cotton with no drape, or give to sew it up, and as a result, there was a lot of puckering and pulling in the front bust area, making it pretty much unwearable, or at least it would make me very uncomfortable to wear it. I'd say that an exception for stiffer fabrics like cotton poplin or quilting cotton is when you sew a loose fitted billowy garment. Something like my billow frock. I actually used a cotton poly bed sheet. Now I don't like polyester, but because it had cotton with it, I was okay with it. And this stiff fabric will actually showcase the billowy silhouette and curved style lines. So pairing the fabric with this style is really important. Light fabrics can also be a nuisance in this area because they tend to pucker if not sewn correctly. Similarly, heavier fabrics may cause more trouble in terms of your machine capability, but it can also be a problem if you pair a heavier fabric with a garment that was designed for a lighter fabric. But to be safe, as you're progressing in your sewing journey, I recommend using natural fabrics, a medium weight, that means it's not too light, it's not too heavy, and you won't go wrong. And also look at the pattern recommendations for fabric because that will be very telling in what kind of fabric that's gonna work with that design. Tip number two, and I kind of touched on this, but machine settings in conjunction with the fabric matter a lot. It's important that when you venture off to a new type of fabric that you do your research. So for example, I actually have a couple of shorts on YouTube where I explain some tips on how to work with slippery fabrics like satin. These types of fabrics are notoriously difficult to work with, so it's really important to know the kinds of things that you can do to achieve a really beautiful garment in the end. Well, let me tell you, if you approach a satin like you do a linen, you're not gonna get a nice garment at the end of all your hard work. Tip number three, pre-wash your fabric. I'm gonna touch on that a little bit later. But also, girl, iron your fabric before you cut and sew it. I've seen so many people showcase their final garment. It looks beautiful, but it would have looked so much more beautiful if you just ironed the fabric before you sewed it. And I've definitely done this before, I'm not gonna lie. Like, sometimes you just wanna lay out your fabric, 
lay out your patterns, cut it out, sew it, get it done, you know? But that's one of the telltale signs that it's homemade. There's also a technical reason why you should iron your fabric first. So when your fabric is all crinkled and wrinkled, and then you place your nice sheet of pattern paper over top and cut it out, you're actually adding length and width to that pattern piece that you cut out because the crinkles have concealed some of the width of the fabric. So this isn't that big of a deal for a garment that's loosely fitting, like for example, my billow frock or something like that. But if you're making something like my dream frock and you cut the bodice part, this part here, out of a wrinkled, crinkled fabric, you're actually adding width to that part when it's supposed to actually be negative ease, which means it's supposed to be tighter than your actual body measurements. And I drafted it like this, and a lot of patterns like that are drafted like this, so that it just maintains that beautiful cinched look. More importantly than that is pre-washing and drying your fabric. I kind of have a funny story about this. I made this wonderful kind of semi-fitted shirt dress, not like this, it was like more fitted. It had a zipper down the front and I didn't pre-wash the fabric beforehand. It was kind of like a denim-y type fabric or canvas-y type fabric. When I washed it, it shrunk of course, but guess what didn't shrink? The zipper. Yes, we had dinosaur fins on the front and it was just a useless garment now. So do not skip that. If in doubt, pre-wash your fabric. I usually wash warm and then I put it through the dryer. Exception, specialty fabrics, satins, leather, stuff like that. Fabrics that, you know, might make a jacket or an outerwear garment. You don't necessarily need to pre-wash them. Usually wool suitings or wool coatings, you're going to pre-steam, not pre-wash because wool doesn't wash well. But keep that in mind, pre-wash your linens, your cottons, even your polyesters because sometimes polyesters shrink too, okay? And especially rayon, viscose, tensile, these fabrics shrink, girl. So don't be caught in the trap. Tip number four press as you go. This is like the most important tip. This is right up there with fabric choice. So I'm going to give you a little bit of homework. Next time you go out and shop for clothes, like you're not making clothes. I know your sewing machine feels betrayed, but you're going to buy your own clothes. You're browsing. Look at those seams. Not one of them will be all like soft and round as if it was just sewn. No, each of those seams are pressed flat, girl. The garment might be wrinkly, but those seams are pressed. And this is the biggest giveaway that your garment is just like home crafted, home put together. Every seam you need to press. And if you want to be a little more extra, a little more professional, get a tailor's clapper. So a tailor's clapper is a wooden block. After you press a seam, you place it on the seam and it draws out the heat and the moisture and sets that seam while also applying pressure. So it really helps with having a really nice, crisp, clean press, okay? And those presses are gonna last through the wash, okay? So press your garments, baby! Tip number five, do not rush. This seems like intuitive. Oh yeah, you shouldn't rush. You shouldn't skip instructions. But it's harder to do than you think. And this is one of the keys to my success as a sewer. I used to just go right ahead and try to sew a garment, skip over things, you know, oh, that doesn't seem necessary. I don't need the fusible interfacing for that piece, whatever. Then I proceed to sew the pocket and it's like, so difficult because I didn't heed the instructions. So I know what it's like to feel like, hey, that doesn't make any sense. I'm not gonna do it that way. I'm gonna do it my way. But it's so important to know the why before you start breaking rules, okay? You gotta know the rules before you break the rules, okay? So that's why in my tutorials, 
I always give a heads up when there's like a tip or a, a technique that seems superfluous, but I'm like, hello girl, if you do this now, you're not gonna have to rip it out later or it's gonna save you some struggle later. So I'm always looking out for you in my tutorials. I can still remember the moment I stopped rushing. It was when I was doing a garment for my portfolio for getting into the university that I went to. And that's when I actually achieved some really great success with my garment. I tried something new and I got it done. And I proceeded with that attitude in fashion school. I slowed myself down. I paid attention to the instructions. I mean, sometimes I still like made it up because I didn't understand, but then I reaped the consequences and learned why. But once I slowed myself down, that's when I started to pay attention to things. I grew in confidence. I grew in my skills and then I grew in speed. So if you want to be a fast sewer, slow down fast and accurate like you can be fast and just like whip something up and it doesn't look that great but if you want to be fast and accurate slow down now learn the tips learn all the little techniques get that understanding in your head and i'm telling you girl you're gonna win the race because you were the turtle but you became the hare okay <laughs> so Pay attention and slow down. Tip number six, get the fit right. <laughs> okay, so a 12 first, girlfriend. I know there's like billowy garments out there. You've seen it on other people. Oh yeah, I'll just style a size six and it fits. You know, you can go ahead with that. Maybe that's an aspect where you don't need to sew a 12. But I highly recommend sewing a toile before going ahead with your good and expensive fabric because you can save yourself so many headaches. I've made garments many a time where it was just like, oh my goodness, if I had just seen that fit issue, I could have easily fixed it and then I wouldn't feel uncomfortable wearing this dress. <laughs> and when you make a toile or sample out of cheaper fabric, um, you don't necessarily have to sew the entire garment. Like say I did a toile of this. I might not even sew the whole construction of the collar. I might not put the patch pockets on because I just want to see how the shoulders fit, how the body fits. So I'll just kind of sew that up quickly and see how it fits. Sew on maybe one sleeve. So it doesn't have to take a long time to get a feel for the fit, but I highly recommend doing it. When I make a new pattern, I sew like four or five samples and I'm always correcting and adjusting the fit just to get it right. Also, especially if you're trying a new pattern company, you don't necessarily know what their ease level is. You don't know how it fits necessarily. I mean, you can get an idea by looking at their finished garment measurements, but it's always good just to do a quick toile just to see where you're at so that if you run into any issues, you can fix it before using that gorgeous fabric. Tip number seven, your final garment may not be bad because of you. You might have done all the right things, but maybe the pattern just isn't your fit or your feel. I hate to say it, but there's a lot of indie pattern companies popping up. They may not necessarily have the experience or the resources that they need to really complete a well-fitting, well-graded pattern. So just be wary of that. I haven't really come across any patterns like this, but just be wary of it. One of the telltale signs that a pattern is good is that you've seen it on somebody else. So what I do with my patterns and what a lot of small indie pattern designers do is they do a tester call. They have maybe 20 to 30 to 50 people try out their pattern in all the different sizes, different body types, different um, bust sizes, and they get them to send in the photos and just give feedback on the patterns. So that's something you can always look for when you're discovering a new pattern company. I'd love to hear 
any of your experiences with people commenting on your clothes in a nice or in a not so nice way. <laughs> Here is a playlist of my tutorials, which I've been telling you so much about, and they all have patterns, PDF patterns with them. So you guys can see for yourself before even buying, see if you like my style. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!